Okay, I'll be taking you through ionic equilibrium part two, uh, which is on solubility product. Okay, as for normal, I'll be switching on the camera so that it's easier for you to follow what I'm saying. Um, at any point in time, if you are lost, you can look at the top left hand corner. Okay, over here, I will tell you which page I'm on. Okay, so you can look there uh, to see which page I'm on if you are lost at any point in time. Okay, now this chapter solubility product is mainly um, talking about salts. Okay, and you have learned from your secondary school, salts are mainly classified into two types: soluble salts or insoluble salts. Okay, so solubility product, we are only interested in this thing called insoluble salts. Okay, but you need to know as well that um, uh, the term insoluble salts is not exactly true. Okay, uh, more specifically or uh, more accurate, we should call them sparingly soluble salts. Okay, there's no such thing as completely insoluble. Actually, these insoluble salts are also soluble to a very small extent. Okay, so that's why we call them sparingly soluble. Okay, and we are also interested in um, looking at a saturated solution. Okay, and the definition of a saturated solution is one which contains the maximum amount of solute. Okay, which means no no more solute can be further dissolved in this solution. Okay, so we are always interested in calculation for a saturated solution in this chapter. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to page four. Okay, so that I can uh, explain to you a bit more about KSP. Okay, uh, this is one example. Okay, uh, we are looking at AgBrO3 here. Okay, which is a solid precipitate. Okay, so previously we would have called this uh, insoluble salt. Okay, but as you can see, it's actually sparingly soluble. So that's why some of it can dissolve in water to form Ag plus and BrO3 minus ions. Okay, so at equilibrium, okay, the concentration of Ag plus and BrO3 minus at equilibrium in the solution will actually be the solubility of AgBrO3. Okay, now, uh, as you can see, it's an equilibrium, so we can represent this in an equilibrium constant, okay, which is Ag plus multiplied by BrO3 minus over AgBrO3. Okay, and because you have learned before, AgBrO3, this thing here, okay, this thing is a solid. Okay, if it's a solid, it shouldn't be your KC expression. We will bring it up as a constant. Okay, so we can re represent it as a KSP constant. Okay, which is just Ag plus multiplied by BrO3 minus. Okay, and uh, because each of these has the units of mole per dm cube, this one also has mole per dm cube. The units of KSP in this case would therefore be mole square dm minus 6 because it's both of these multiplied together. Okay? Okay, uh, a more general equation for KSP would be. Okay, let's say these are the ions form. It will just be the ions to the power of the coefficient. Okay? To the power of the coefficient. X and Y, the coefficient. Okay? Very similar to your KC. Okay? And similar to your KC as well, KSP is only affected by temperature. Okay? We will cover this a bit later on. Okay? So, let's try this out. Um, let's look at... I'll give you some time to try this out. Write the KSP expression for each of these. Okay, so all of these are solid precipitates. I'll, I'll write out the equation for you, and then you write out the KC expression. Okay, AgCl is a solid. It's primarily soluble to give you Ag plus and Cl minus. CrOH3 is a precipitate as well. It's a solid, and it's also primarily soluble to give me Cr3 plus and 3OH minus Okay, so these are the equations for to represent the the uh, slight solubility of the of the salt of the sparingly soluble salt. Okay, I'll give you some time to write down the KSP expression. Okay, quite simple. 
the first one will then be KSP equals to concentration of AG plus multiplied by CR minus. So concentration of CR3 plus OH minus to the power of 3. Okay, because the coefficient is 3. Last one. AG plus. Okay, coefficient is 2, so to the power of 2. And CO3, 2 minus. Okay? I'll leave it there for a while if you need to copy anything. Okay, next up we'll be doing some calculations okay, for solubility so that you can so they know how to make use of the KSP to calculate the solubility of the different types of uh, sparingly soluble salts. Okay, let's Okay, uh, let's look at our first example. Okay, our first word example to show the calculation for KSP. Okay, how to calculate KSP given the solubility. Okay, I'm on page 7. Okay, so one thing you need to know is this. Huh? Okay, let's start with an ice table. Okay, so let's look at the, the dissolving of silver chloride, uh, which you should know is a white precipitate. Okay, and in your ice table, solids are not considered. Okay, initially, haven't dissolved yet, so these two are zero. Okay, and the change at equilibrium would be plus x and plus x. Okay, which means at equilibrium we have x most for the cube of Ag plus and x most for the cube of Co Cl minus. Okay, so equilibrium in over here would mean that it reaches saturation. Okay, so only when it reaches saturation, then it reaches the equilibrium. Okay, and one thing you need to know is that the solubility will always be x. Can Okay, whenever we talk about solubility, it means X, which means X moles of AgCl dissolve in water to give you one DNQ of a saturated solution. Okay, so just you just need to remember that X is always um, the solubility. Okay, so KSP is equal to Ag plus Cl minus, which is X squared. Okay, and just sub in the x over here, they tell you the solubility is this. So this is the x, 1.0 times 10 power minus 5 square. We should give you a value of 1.0 times 10 power minus 10 mole square dm minus 6. Okay, I'll leave it there for some time for you to write down anything you need to write down. Okay, next, let's do a next example. Let's do our ice table once again. It's a solid, so don't need to care about the solid. Initially, it's zero. Okay, and look, let's look at the change. Okay, the change should follow the mole ratio. So at equilibrium, this will be plus 2x, this will be x. Okay, which means at equilibrium, 2x and x. Okay, and your KSP over here is Ag plus square multiplied by CO3 2 minus. Okay, where Ag plus is has a concentration of 2x, so this is 2x squared multiplied by x, total is 4x cubed. Okay, and what is our x? Our x is the solubility of Ag2CO3, this is the x. Okay, sub it in. 4 multiplied by 1 to 1, 2, 5, 10 to the power minus 4. Answer should give me 7.81, 10 to the power minus 12 mole. Over here is mole cube dm minus 9. Okay, because uh, of the concentration here, this is Ag plus square multiplied by CO3 to minus. That's why the unit is mole cube dm minus 9. Okay, now let's try this example. Okay, over here they give you the solubility in terms of gram per dm cube. So please convert it to mole per dm cube first. They are by the MR. Convert it to mole per dm cube. So this one is your X. Okay, this is your x. Okay. Initially, initial all this will be zero once again. This will be the change will follow the mole ratio, so this is plus x. This will be plus 3x. At equilibrium, which is at saturation, you have x most per dnq of AL3 plus and 
3x moles per dn cube of OH minus. KSP would be AL3 plus multiplied by OH minus the power of 3, which is x, 3x to the power of 3, total is 27x to the power of 4, which is 27, 1.82, like 10 power minus 9 to the power of 4. Which, is, which should give you a value of 2.97 times 10 power minus 34 okay units here because it's AL3 plus the power of 1 multiplied by OH minus the power of 3 total to the power of mole 4 dm minus 12 okay okay next okay just now you know how to calculate KSP given the solubility, you also must be able to do it the other way around, which means if I give you KSP, you must be able to calculate solubility or the X. Okay, you must be able to calculate the X. This one will be 0, 0, plus X, plus X. Okay, the change just follows the mole ratio all the time. So very easy. KSP equals to X squared. 2.0 times 10 power minus 5 equals to X squared. X will therefore be square root of 2.0 times 10 power minus 5. Okay, so if you square root it, you should get a value of 4.47 times 10 power minus 3. More per dn cube. Okay, I'm on page 8. Huh? By the way, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause, okay, and, and, and give yourself some time to work it out. Okay, so this will be the solubility, okay, your x is the solubility. Okay, okay, let's move on to this one, example 4. Okay, now you have let 2 iodide as per normal ignore this this 0 this 0 this will be plus x plus 2x and equilibrium at saturation this will be x and 2x ksp is concentration of pb2 plus multiplied by concentration of i minus square which is equal to x times 2x squared which will be equal to 4x cubed okay ksp is this value so 1.4 times 10 power minus 8 equals to 4x cubed Okay, so you divide it by 4, solve for x, x will be equals to, let's see what is x, uh, x will be equals to 1.52 times 10 power minus 3 mole per dn cube. Okay, by the way, the solubility or the x will always have units of mole per dn cube. Huh? Okay, so this will be the solubility. Okay, so if we compare that with the solubility of calcium sulfate. Okay, if we compare that to the solubility of calcium sulfate. Uh, calcium sulfate in example 3 has a solubility of 4.47 times 10 power minus 3. This one is 1.52 times 10 power minus 3. This would be smaller. So solubility of this is less. Okay, it will be less. Less than the solubility of calcium sulfate. So PBI2 is less soluble. Okay, so whenever you want to compare which one is more soluble or less soluble, okay, you need to work out the solubility, work out the X, and then see which value is larger. Okay, now I, I go back to page 6. Huh? You see this in page 6. Okay, if they are different, if they are the same formula type, Okay, if the formula type is the same, which means 
AGCL, AGI. Okay, the same. Okay, we can compare solubility by looking at the KSP directly. Okay, because KSP is just it's, it's proportional to the solubility. Okay, KSP of these are proportionate. Okay, so let's say I want to compare the, the solubility of AGCL versus AGI, I can just look at the KSP because the KSP in this case is so, is proportional to the X. Okay, so the value itself is a uh, um, you can use the, the value of KSP itself to to tell you about the solubility. Okay, but if it's a different formula type, as in example three and four, which is just what we did, okay, like calcium sulfate versus lead two iodide PBI two. Okay, the formula type is different. Okay, so we cannot compare KSP because KSP of this is this Ca2 plus multiplied by SO4 to minus while KSP of this is Pb2 plus and I minus squared. Okay, so different formula types. In order to tell which one is more soluble, you need to calculate out the solubility to compare. Okay, but for the same formula type, we can look at the KSP. What do I mean by same formula type? Okay, CaSO4 and AgCl, you can also compare directly using KSP because the formula type is the same. Okay, so what, what do I mean by the same formula type? Okay, you can look back on page 6 as well. Okay, all of this here is considered like the AB type. Okay, because the KSP, the KSP would have uh, this type of formula A M plus B Y minus something like that uh, A X plus and B Y minus something like that okay these are all the AB type so among the AB types you can just look at the KSP to compare uh, solubility among these types, okay, okay, if they are all AB2 types, you can look at the KSP to compare the, their solubility as well. Okay, but if it's across different formula types, let's say that means if you are comparing AB versus AB2 types, okay, you cannot look at the KSP, you have to calculate out the, the, the solubility. Okay, but in any case, if, if at any point in time you are not sure, foolproof way is always to calculate out the solubility. Okay, you calculate out the solubility, you will always be able to tell which one is more soluble. Okay, let's move on back to page 9. Okay, let's look at example 5. Okay, so at least this will be 0, 0, 0. This one will follow the mole ratio plus 3x plus 2x. At equilibrium at saturation, this will be 3x and this will be 2x. Okay, and what is your KSP would be Ca2 plus to the power of 3, PO4, 3 minus squared. So this is 3x squared, 3x to the power of 3, 2x to the power of 2, which will be equals to so 108x to the power of 5. Okay, so they want you to represent uh, the solubility in terms of the KSP. So X would be equals to KSP over 108 root 5. Okay. Okay, I want to introduce a new concept called uh, ionic product already. Yeah? Okay, let me try to explain to you um, the difference between ionic product and solubility product. Um, every year students usually get confused by this. Now, okay, what is ionic product? Um, it has the same formula as a KSP. Okay, the difference is this. KSP tells you the concentration of ions at saturation. Whereas for ionic product, we assume that everything that we are adding in dissolves. Okay, I repeat. Uh, 
KSP, for KSP we assume, no sorry, for KSP is the concentration of the ions at saturation, okay, is a fixed value, okay, whereas for ionic product we assume that whatever you are adding in completely dissolves, okay, so after that we will compare with KSP, if the ionic product is less than KSP, it means that everything will dissolve, if ionic product and KSP are equal, it means that that is the point of saturation, if ionic product is greater than KSP, it will mean that whatever you are trying to dissolve is greater than what the saturation point can hold and therefore your solution is, is saturated and things will start to precipitate out okay because uh, not everything is able to dissolve uh, in the solution at that point in time okay so let me show you an example okay by calculating this okay so now this is the this solution of calcium sulfate with this KSP value okay KSP values are fixed unless you change the temperature Okay, now if you add in 0.3 gram of calcium sulfate, number of moles of that is equal to 0.3 over mR of calcium sulfate is 136.2. You will get 0.0022 mole. Okay, and it's dissolved in one DNQ of water, which means assuming that all of this dissolves your AG plus sorry not AG plus okay, let me rewrite this huh? your N is equal to 0 0.3 over 136.2 which will be 0 0.0022 mole okay and it's dissolved in one dnq of water so therefore your calcium 2 plus equals to your sulfate concentration which is 0 0.0022 mole per dnq okay formula for ip is the same as ksp Ionic product, I will call it IP for short, is AG plus, sorry, not AG plus, it's CA2 plus multiplied by SO4 2 minus, which is equals to 0.0022 square. Okay, ionic product is what you're adding in now, what you're actually adding in. Okay, which will be equals to. 4.8 times 10 power minus 6 mole square dm minus 6 okay so this is the ionic product okay and we can see the ionic product is 4.8 times 10 power minus 6 ksp is 2.0 times 10 power minus 5 so ionic product at this point in time is less than your ksp so therefore this 0.3 gram all of it would dissolve Okay, because you haven't reached uh, you haven't reached the saturation point yet. Okay, now if you add in another 0 0.309 gram, which means total I've added in 0 0.609 gram. Number of moles, huh? Is 0 0.609 over 136.2, which is equals to 0 0.00447 moles. That means in total now I've added in 0 0.00447 moles of calcium sulfate and assuming that all of it dissolves, that will be my ionic product. If I assume that everything dissolves, uh, it will be equal to 0.00447 square, which will give you a value of about 2 times 10 power minus 5 moles square dm minus 6. Okay, so which means at this point in time, your IP, your ionic product, whatever you have dissolved, it goes to your KSP. That means this is the point of saturation. Anything beyond this point, anything more that you add beyond this point will just precipitate out because your solution cannot hold any more ions. Okay, this, this is the point of saturation. Okay, so let's calculate further. Now, if I add in a further one gram of salt, so that means in total, how much have I added in? I've added in 0 0.609 and plus another 0.1 gram so it's 0 0.709 over 
136.2 they give you a value of 0 0.0052 moles okay so let's calculate the ionic product at this point ionic product once again is I assume everything that I adding in dissolves so now I have added 0 0.0052 moles I assume that all of it dissolves my ionic product would be 2.7 times 10 to the power of minus 5 Okay, and you can see that this value here, 2.7 times 10 to the power minus 5, is greater than my KSP. It means that um, whatever I've added in cannot be fully dissolved, okay, because ionic product is greater than KSP. And therefore, my sol the remaining solid will precipitate out, okay. It will, whatever can dissolve will dissolve, and the remaining will just precipitate out. Okay, so that's the meaning of ionic product versus KSP. Okay, so let's look at some examples okay, to see how uh, we can make use of this. Okay, so now if we mix a 10 to the power minus 3 moles per day cube solution of calcium 2 plus ions with an equal volume. Okay, so now we are mixing two things of equal volume. Okay, what it means is that initially the concentration of each is 10 to the power minus 3 but upon mixing upon mixing because you are adding the same volume the concentration of each would be halved okay because you are adding the same volume so now the total volume would double okay so the concentration of each ion would be half so after mixing okay so after mixing sorry I'm not sure what happened just now after mixing okay uh, my Ca2 plus from 10 to the power minus 3 moles per day cube would now be half to become this concentration. SO4 2 minus would be half as well. Okay, so this would be my concentration of ions in the solution. Let's find the ionic product, multiply them together. This is my ionic product. We compare this value. Okay, let's compare this value versus my KSP. 2.4 times 10 to the power minus 5. Okay, we will see the ionic product is less than KSP, so therefore, no precipitation occurs. Okay, so this is how you make use of ionic product. Okay, so let's try out the next example on your own. I'll give you some time to try it on your own. Okay, you can pause the video first while you try this quick chat tree. Okay, when you mix in uh, equal volumes of AgN3 and sodium carbonate, okay, what would be your precipitate? Your precipitate is Ag2CO3 solid. Okay, and after you add in Ag plus concentration will be half, okay, because you are mixing in two equal volumes, so immediately the concentration will be halved. Let me see, yeah. Okay, it will be 2.0 times 10 power minus 5 over 2, which will be 1.0 times 10 power minus 5. CO3 to minus will be halved as well. Okay, and what is the IP? Is AG plus square over uh, times CO3 to minus. Okay, we shall give 1.0 times 10 power minus 5 square times 1.0 times 10 power minus 5. We should be 1.0 times 10 power minus 15 mole cube. 
dm minus 9 ok so let's compare ok this is my ionic product this is the ksp oh it's less it's less ok so ip is less than ksp no precipitation Okay, no precipitation will occur. Okay, now what happens if you mix two solutions of different volumes? Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, what is your precipitate here? Oh, precipitate here will be for PBSO4. Okay, so we are concerned about PBSO4. So uh, this is this is precipitate. Ah. Okay, so let's see. You mix 300 cm of this concentration PBNO3, which means concentration of PB. 2 plus, okay, it's 1 is to 1, so let's find the number of moles first, times 1.0, this is the number of moles of PB2 plus, okay, and divide by the new volume, because you mix 300 and 200, the total volume will now be 500. Okay, so you divide by your total volume. Okay, which will be 6. Okay, SO4 2 minus is also a uh, 1 is to 1 ratio of Na2SO4, so no big issue. Let's find the number of moles of, N of SO4 to minus first, okay, which is 200 cm cube multiplied by this. Okay, this is the number of moles of SO4 to minus divided by the new volume, which should be. Okay, so now I have my concentration of PB2 plus and SO4 to minus. Let's find my IP. IP is just PB2 plus multiplied by SO4 to minus, which should be equal to Okay, multiply it together will give you a value of Two point four zero times ten power minus six mole square dm minus six. Okay, and let's compare this. This is the IP KSP is one point six times ten to the power minus eight. Uh, this looks larger. Yeah, it's larger than KSP. IP is larger than KSP, which means precipitation. Of course. Okay, let's try the next example. Dissolving a solid into a solution. Okay. What is my precipitate here will be PBCL2. PBCL2 solid, it should become PB2 plus and 2Cl minus. Okay. Sodium chloride, let's look at the Concentration of PB2 plus first, PB2 plus equals to, is here, 1 is to 1. This is the information.
which means it's 100 oh there is no change in volume so therefore pv2 plus will still be the same the same concentration okay because there's no change in volume okay uh, it's still 100 cm3 the only thing we have to calculate is the concentration of cr minus which is the number of moles then my mr which is 23 plus Twenty three plus thirty five point five. Fifty eight point five. It's the number of moles of C R minus. Okay. From here. Okay, from here. Okay, because C R minus comes from any C L. There's zero point five grams of any C L. Okay, this is the number of moles divided by volume, which is hundred cm cube. Okay, if you put everything into your calculator, you should get this value. Let's find the IP. It's PB2 plus multiplied by CR minus square. Sub in your PB2 plus 0 0.100. CR minus will be 0 0.0855. And square it. You will get 7.31. That's the power of minus 4. 7.31 times 10 power minus 4 okay mole cube dm minus 9 okay let's compare ksp value is this 10 power minus 5 versus 10 power minus 4 this one is greater than ksp precipitation occurs Okay, now let's look at the different factors that affect uh, solubility, okay, uh, which are all listed on page 3 of your notes. Okay, so we'll be looking at each of these in turn right now. Okay, solubility, I've already mentioned this, it can be affected by temperature because uh, KSP is affected by temperature only. Okay, KSP like, like your any KC, uh, your KA, KB, all these are all affected by temperature. So if your KSP is affected by temperature, your solubility will be affected as well. Okay, and next we'll be looking at something called common ion effect. Okay, solubility is also affected by common ion effect. Okay, so what is this common ion effect? Okay, what is this? Is this? Okay, so uh, look, let's look at this. Huh? You have this uh, sparingly soluble salt, BASO4. Okay, we know that okay, you can some of it will dissolve in your solution at, to form a saturated solution of Ba2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Now, if let's say you have you have um, the presence of additional Ba2 plus and SO or SO4 2 minus from another source. So for example, if let's say you're adding in barium hydroxide, okay, let's say you're adding barium hydroxide, this is the base, it will fully Dissolve to give you Ba2 plus and OH minus ions. Okay, which means now I have an additional source of Ba2 plus. So what happens is this: you have an additional source of Ba2 plus, your Ba2 plus would increase. Okay, and this will cause your your solubility equilibrium to shift to the left. Okay, it will shift to the left as predicted by LCP. Okay, and as a result, because it shifts to the left, it means that less BASO4 can dissolve and therefore the solubility is decreased okay there will be a decreased solubility of BASO4 because your equilibrium has shifted to the left <coughs> okay so this is the qualitative explanation let's look at the quantitative explanation okay but before that let's look at this video okay so over here we'll be looking at uh, silver iodide Okay, the, the solubility of silver iodide in the presence of a common ion effect. The solubility equilibrium is expressed by the solubility product. 
The silver and iodide ions are of equal concentration in the solution. Okay, so initially, okay, this one over here, this is your um, silver iodide precipitate. Okay, and it exists in equilibrium in saturation. So right now you have some C I minus in the solution. You have some Ag plus in the solution as well. It's in equilibrium in a saturated solution. With sodium iodide, a soluble salt is added. Okay, so this is a soluble soluble salt, sodium iodide. Okay, now you add in sodium iodide. So this sodium iodide, you're going to see it dissolve. Okay, fully dissolve. The concentration of iodide ion is greatly increased. This okay, so as your sodium iodide dissolves, it re releases I minus in the solution, which means my I minus at this instant increases, it's much greater. Okay, so it will shift the equilibrium to the left and precipitate the out more AGI. Okay, at a point, let's, let's rewatch that. At the point uh, when it dissolves, okay, initially it was saturated, okay, but when it dissolves, it introduced more I minus to the solution. Okay, so our I minus now has increased, which means your IP is now greater than your KSP. Product constant. Okay, so precipitation will occur over here. Concentrations exceeds KSP. Additional solid silver iodide forms iodide and silver ion concentrations again equals KSP. At equilibrium when the product of the silver and iodide concentrations equals KSP, the silver ion concentration is much smaller than the iodide concentration. The addition of sodium iodide, which greatly enlarges the concentration of one of the ions in the solubility equilibrium, has reduced the solubility of silver iodide. This reduction in solubility is an example of the common ion effect. Okay, so you need to be able to explain this common ion effect both qualitatively as well as quantitatively. Okay, so this, uh, this is uh, example 9 is a qualitative explanation. Okay, they are asking what happens okay, when you have silver nitrate added to a saturated solution of AgCl. Okay, you know your AgCl is a white precipitate and it's saturated currently. When you add in AgNO3, AgNO3 is soluble, it will produce more Ag+. Okay, your silver nitrate will produce Ag+. Okay, and when it produces Ag+, Ag+, increases. By LCP principle, by LCP, your position of equilibrium will then shift to the left. Okay, resulting in more AgCl being precipitated. Okay, that's why... That's why you have more high pressure form here. Okay, now let's look at the quantitative, uh, what is happening quantitatively. Okay. Okay, you are given the solubility product of barium sulfate. They ask you to calculate the solubility of barium sulfate in water. So this is your normal case, okay, when it's a saturated solution of barium sulfate. Okay, so initially this x, initially this zero. Uh, sorry, sorry, not x. I mean, initially barium sulfate is a solid. Okay, so we do not consider it in our ice table. Okay, initially barium two plus and SO four two minus is zero as well because haven't dissolved yet. The change follows the mole ratio, so plus x plus x at equilibrium at saturation you have x moles per dQ of barium two plus and x moles per dQ of sulfate SO four two minus. Okay, they want the solubility KSP would be equals to Ba2 plus multiplied by SO4 2 minus which is equals to X squared. KSP is given to you. Which will be equals to X squared. Your X will be equals to Mole per day cube. Okay, this is the solubility of barium sulfate in water, which means this is the normal case, no common ion effect. Okay, when there's only barium sulfate, uh, what's the solubility? Okay, at saturation. Okay, now let's look at what happens. Okay, when there's common ion effect, when I add in a, a source of sulfate in the form of sodium sulfate. So what happens is 
sodium sulfate, all sodium salts are soluble, it will it will dissolve to form sodium ions and sulfate ions. So now you have an additional source of sulfate ions. Okay, so let's look at how that affects our solubility. Okay, so let the new solubility be Y. Ah. Okay, and of course we expect Y to be smaller now, okay, because of the common ion effect. But let's look at it uh, quantitatively. Okay, so once again, barium sulfate is a solid, so it's a dash, not included in my ice table. Initial concentration of barium 2 plus is zero. Initial concentration of sulfate over here now is not zero because there is an additional sulfate source. So it's it initial is 0 0.1. Okay, the change follows the mole ratio, so plus y plus y. At equilibrium, this is y. This is 0 0.100 0 0 plus y. Which means Ksp equals to y times 0 0.100 0 0 plus y. Okay, and because we know that um, these are sparingly soluble salts, the solubility is very low, so Y is quite small. In other words, this 0 0.1 plus Y is approximately equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so in other words, this is 0 0.1 times Y. That's all. Okay, let me rewrite this so that you are clear. Okay, it's Y times 0 0.1. Okay, because 0 0.1 plus y, y is very small, 0 0.1 plus y will be approximately equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so you sub it into your KSP, your y value will be equal to 1.00 times 10 to the power minus 9 mole per dn cube. Okay, and you can see uh, with the common ion effect, Okay, the solubility now is much, much lower. Okay, previously in water, the solubility was 10 to the power minus 5. Now with the common ion effect, the solubility is 10 to the power minus 9. That is a 10,000 times difference. Okay, so you can see how uh, having a common ion would decrease the solubility uh, quantitatively. Okay, so these are numbers okay, to show you what happens. Okay, so we have seen how solubility is affected by common ion effect. Okay, later on we'll be looking at how it's affected by pH, how it's affected by complex ion formation, etc. Okay, and once again I want to remind you that KSP depends only on temperature. Okay, KSP is only affected by temperature and nothing else. Okay, next let's look at how um, pH will affect solubility. Okay, so this is an example okay, uh, of various, over, over here, okay, of various uh, sparingly soluble salts. Okay, so what happens is by changing the pH, okay, by adding a base, NaOH, okay, when you increase the amount of NaOH, okay, when you, inc when you add in more NaOH, your pH of your solution will increase, okay, and you're increasing the OH minus. So for all of these, the OH minus would increase. Okay, let me let me write out the KSP equation for all of these methods. Okay, uh, it's just a matter hydroxide. Okay, and by by controlling the pH. Okay, when you have more OH minus, it will shift the equilibrium left and selectively precipitate out uh, different metal hydroxides okay, based on the KSP. So as you slowly increase the pH okay, by adding in more OH-, the one with the smallest KSP would precipitate first. Okay, The one with the lowest KSP, this one. This one has the lowest KSP. So this one will, will precipitate out first uh, because it has the lowest KSP. And then as you continue adding in more OH-, minus, PBOH2 will precipitate next and lastly COOH2. Okay, so this is how you can selectively precipitate by controlling the pH. Okay, lastly, uh, complex ion formation will also affect the solubility of a salt. In fact, it will increase the solubility of a salt uh, when you form a complex. Okay, so let's take a look at, at one of these examples. Okay, so let's look at what happens when you have a uh, complex ion formation okay with, together with silver chloride 
Okay, when you have uh, AG plus and CL minus you form AGCL which is your heart precipitate. Now when you add in ammonia, okay, in equation 2, when you add in ammonia, you will shift equilibrium 2 to the right to form the silver diamine complex. Okay, it will shift it to the right. As you add ammonia, this equilibrium 2 will be shifted to the right to form silver diamine complex. And as it forms more silver diamine complex, AG plus concentration will decrease. Okay, and as AG plus concentration decreases, ionic product would drop as well. Okay, if you still recall, ionic product in this case is AG plus concentration times Cr minus concentration. So as you add in ammonia, equilibrium 2 will shift to the right, AG plus will drop. Okay, let me show you the drop. AG plus will drop. Okay, and what happens is your ionic product will decrease. Okay, as your AG plus drops, IP will drop. Okay, and eventually IP will drop until it's less than KSP, resulting in the, the equilibrium one shifting to the left. Okay, AGCL will be, therefore dissolve. Okay, when your ionic product drops below your KSP. Okay, and let's look at what happens uh, in the case for silver iodide. Similarly, uh, when you add in ammonia, equilibrium four will shift to the right. Okay, and AG plus will drop as well. Okay, IP ionic product of silver iodide is AG plus multiplied by I minus. Now, as your AG plus decreases, your IP will drop as well. However, the difference is this: KSP of AGI is very small. Okay, it's very very small. So even though IP drops, it is unable to drop below the KSP of AGI. Okay, and when IP is unable to drop below KSP, it will still uh, the 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 salt will not be able to dissolve. Okay, it will still remain as a precipitate. Okay, so if you still recall, okay, if you look at the KSP values on page, okay, let's see on page, I think it should be page 17. Okay, on page 17, you have the KSP of your silver chloride, silver bromide, and silver iodide. Okay, if you look at this, the KSP of silver iodide is 10 to the power of minus 17, 8.3 times 10 to the power of minus 17, whereas AGCL is 10 to the power minus 10. Okay, this is a factor of 10 to the power 7. Okay, 10 million. 10 million difference. Okay, which is why even though the IP of AGI drops, it is unable to drop below the KSP of AGI. So therefore, the precipitate of AGI remains. Okay. So because of the KSP of AGI is very small. Okay, the IP is still larger than KSP. In this case, it's still larger than KSP because the KSP is very small. Okay, because it is very, very small. So even though IP drops, it cannot drop below the KSP. Okay, so that is why uh, if you look at the summary, AGI, okay, the AGI is insoluble. Okay, it's insoluble. AGCL will be soluble in both. Okay, dilute NH3 and concentrated NH3. It will be soluble. AGBR, the KSP is uh, moderate is between AGCL and AGI. So in dilute NH3 it is unable to drop below the KSP. Okay, but if you use concentrated ammonia, it becomes soluble. Okay, let's move on. Uh, another example. You now slightly different. Okay, we know copper hydroxide is a uh, precipitate as well. Okay, similarly, this time if you, when you add ammonia, you will shift it to the right okay, to form the dark blue solution. This ammonium complex, you are going to learn this in transition methods. Okay, which means your CO2 plus will drop. Okay, and as your CO2 plus drops, the IAP, the ionic product of CuSO4, okay. Let me, let me write this out. As it drops Cu2 plus, as Cu2 plus drops, the IP will drop as well. And the IP will drop until it's below KSP and therefore your copper hydroxide in this case will dissolve. Okay, one last case, uh, part D, one last case. 
Uh, iodine is not very soluble in water. Okay, iodine is not very soluble, so normally we represent it as an I2S. Okay, you can make it more soluble by adding I minus to form an I3 minus complex. Okay, so this is just showing you how a complex formation can increase the solubility of your iodine over here. Okay, uh, one last thing you need to know is that uh, AgCl and AgBr can decompose uh, in the presence of light. Okay, in the presence of light, AgCl and AgBr can be decomposed to uh, silver matter as well as chlorine or bromine gas. Okay, so this is a fundamental principle that we use in uh, photography. Okay, the, this decomposition reaction is how we use to develop a film. Okay, and I'm going to show you a video on this. Okay, so you can try example 11, I think is given to you already. Okay, uh, these are just some exam questions that you could see in A level. Okay, so when you add HCl to HGNO3, what will you see is a white precipitate of AgCl. Okay, this is a white precipitate. After one hour of daylight, this white, white precipitate will turn grey. Okay, which is it will decompose to silver. Okay, now how do we confirm that this precipitate is AgCl? <coughs> how do we confirm that it's AgCl? Uh, we can make use of a reaction that you have learned earlier on, which is to add dilute NH3. Okay, because when you add dilute NH3, it will form the silver diamine complex, and then your AgCl precipitate will, uh, will dissolve. Okay? It will dissolve. So this is what you have to know. So all these type of questions, the, the concepts that you have learned about AgCl decomposing as well as the solubility of AgCl in excess ammonia, in excess aqueous ammonia, all this you have to know because um, they can easily test you together with, with organic chemistry. For example, the four-step test, formation of AgCl, formation of AgBr in the four-step test. Okay, so all these concepts are linked. You will need to know. Okay, one last example. Uh, okay, just as what I mentioned, um, it can be you can be tested on this together with organic chem. Okay, so you have an organo halogen compound here. Okay, when they heat it with sodium, the halogen is then converted into sodium halide. So this is my organic compound. It's heated with sodium. You can see that there is Cl in there and I in there, which means I'm going to form NaCl and NaI. Then you add aqueous silver nitrate. Okay, so all these are salts. This is a Cl minus salt and I minus salt. So therefore, if you add aqueous silver nitrate, you are going to form AgCl and AgI. Okay, on adding addition of silver nitrate. Okay, and finally you add in corn ammonia. Okay, so what happens is AgCl will dissolve to form AgNH3. Okay, AgI will also form, but as you have seen earlier, the ionic product will not drop below the KSP. So therefore, AgI will remain as a precipitate. Your AgCl will dissolve. Okay, AgI will remain as a precipitate, AgCl will dissolve. So what observation will you see? Okay, all the precipitate dissolves, no, because AgI will not dissolve. Uh, AgCl will dissolve, so not all the precipitate remains as well. AgI is yellow, white cream yellow, yes. AgCl is yellow, AgCl is white. Okay, so as your white precipitate dissolves, your precipitate will then therefore appear more yellow because you only have your AgI left. Okay, so I think we've come to the end of uh, this KSP chapter. It's not a very hard chapter, but um, calculation-wise, sometimes students might find it a little bit hard to grasp. Okay, and you need to be aware that this KSP chapter is only used for sparingly soluble salts. If you have very soluble salts, please do not use KSP. 
okay because it will just uh, it, will, it will dissolve on its own KSV is only meant for very sparingly soluble salts because the the solubility of this is all very low okay uh, I think we'll come to the end uh, okay so anytime when you're not too clear on this chapter you can always come back to this webcast and, and view it again okay and that's the reason why I made this into a webcast Okay, and if I'm not wrong, uh, this KSV chapter should be one of your last few chapters. If not, you're one of the last cha chapters that you're going to learn. Okay, so all the best for your prelims as well as your A-levels. Okay, work hard and study hard after this. Bye-bye.